Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this session today. And um, let me start off by, by first introducing myself, and then I'll talk a little bit about the company that I work for uh, before I go into the topic of this, uh, of this talk today, which is about the, need, the growing need for tunable lasers. So my name is Joost Verberg. I'm the Director of Product Management for Effect Photonics. And if you want to reach me after this presentation, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, email, telephone number, whichever you prefer. I'm available. We also have a booth here, so you can come and visit us uh, as well. So at Effect Photonics, we focus on the interaction between uh, digital and light. And that's the place where we'd like to disrupt the status quo. And we do this in a few distinct markets that we focus on. Uh, the first one is telecom. So 5G access networks, also looking forward towards 6G and um, um, in the telecom market. So the other market here in the middle is the other types of access networks that are out there. You can think about fixed wireless or cable type of networks. And there we are introducing coherent uh, technology into these markets that are all the way out at the edges of the network. The final uh, market where we focus is cloud and cloud edge. So really the hyperscalers, data centers, but also the edge data centers, so the smaller ones that are closer to the end user. Um, we do this through a portfolio of products, uh, three categories. First one is the pluggables, where we look at both direct detect pluggables, but also coherent uh, type pluggables. Second one is the sub-assemblies. So here you can talk, think about uh, ITLAs, so integrated tunable laser assemblies, or even IC Troza, so fully integrated coherent transmit and receive optical sub-assemblies. Uh, both of which are uh, within our portfolio. And then the, the final part is the ASICs, uh, where we also produce digital signal processing, or DSPs, for coherent transmission systems. I'll talk a bit more about that uh, in the next slide. So we base ourselves on three uh, technological foundations, or three pillars. Uh, the left one being the electrical semiconductor solution, the optical semiconductor solution, and the third one being the way we combine those two things together. Um, so on the electrical semiconductor side, as I mentioned, we have the DSP technology, we have a team in-house that can design these DSPs, we have the IP uh, to support the various different speeds that are out there, like 100G, 400G, 800G um, um, transmission speeds, and we also have the FEC, or Forward Error Correction IP, to put in there as well. On the optics side, our key focus is on the light source. Uh, we use an indium phosphide uh, technology stack there, and it is able to give us ultra-pure light. I'll explain later what I mean with that. Uh, but basically, very high-performance laser that we can either sell as a separate laser in, a, in an ITLA type of configuration, or we can combine on our optical platform together with modulators, photodiodes, to make a more complex uh, optical system on chip. The third pillar, also very important, we leverage existing ecosystems. So we are a completely fabless company, both on the uh, electrical semiconductor side, so the silicon, as also on the optical semiconductor side, on the indium phosphide. We don't own a fab, we work with foundries across the world, and we are able to leverage all of the investment that has gone into this space uh, for our uh, benefit. And the same is true for packaging and testing. We use all the... Um, the investments that have gone into it, the microelectronics ecosystem and we package our optical and our electrical chips in a way that is very standard in these uh, types, of, types of industries. So that was a small introduction about effect uh, and now I'll move on to the, the topic of this, uh, this discussion today. So the growing need for tunable lasers and I'll focus specifically on access, met metro and DCI networks in other words, the edge of the network, so the outside. So this picture will probably look familiar to a lot of you guys. Um, it's one that I took from the latest Ericsson Mobility Report. You can find it on the internet. 
Um, and it shows that network traffic keeps increasing exponentially. Well, obviously, we always say that. But what's interesting to me more than the red bars is actually the, the black line, which is the year-on-year -year growth, right? So how much are we adding every year to the, to the amount of traffic that is going on? And you can see there was a spike here. But you can also see that for the last couple of years, it's been very steady, about 40% extra data being transmitted every year. So that's a lot. That's just causing this exponential curve uh, to be there. But what's even more interesting is this data uh, explosion is not uniformly distributed across the network. Because what we actually see is, uh, if you think about a network like this, this is a stylized picture. You have the core. You have, let's say, the metro, uh, metro part of the network. And then you have the edges. So the edges are really where the, the end users are. And end users can be many things, can be fiber to the home, can be cloud edge, can be telecom, 5G, right? Can be cable, remote fi. Um, but all sorts of different users here. And if you look at this picture here, which I uh, took from the Cisco report, it's already quite old, but the, the newer pictures show the exact same behavior. Um, and this displays CDN versus non-CDN traffic. Now, what does that mean? Um, CDN stands for Content Distribution Network, and that's basically a server which sits at the edge and provides to the end users. So what we're seeing is that the edge traffic, the blue part, is growing much more rapidly than the non-edge traffic. And just maybe to explain what CDN does, uh, a nice example I like to use is that comes, speaks to people is Netflix, right? So Netflix heavily uses CDNs, means that if here in Basel you want to view a, a series or a movie, they track what is popular in this region, and that actually gets stored locally, so it doesn't have to come all the way from the US to Basel, but it just it sits regionally. So there's a lot of data flowing between the regional data center and the end user, but it isn't flowing all the way to the core and then back to the edge again. So basically it means exponential growth, and on top of that, another exponential growth at the edge. So the edge is really under a lot of pressure um, to perform, and there's a lot of bandwidth demand there. So network traffic growth more prominent at the edge than in the core. Um, so OK, let's say we, we acknowledge that this is true. Then how are we going to address that in the different markets? And here I split in two. Um, access and metro on the one side, and data center interconnects on the other side. Um, so on the left side, you see you can basically go along two axes, um, either, either, let's say, direct detect type of technologies or coherent type of technologies. And you can either be point to point or multi-point. Um, and what we see is when it's 1G, 10G, 25G, up to 50G, maybe, not 100% sure, it can be done in direct detect. But once you start going to 100G or higher, uh, coherent technology comes into play, even in access and metro networks where it didn't used to be. It used to be only in the, in the let's say, sub, um, submarine type of technology, but it's coming closer to the edge. And you can see either point to multipoint, like a coherent pawn or XR optics, who is speaking after me, um, or it can be point to point, like 100G DWDM or 100G ZR. So we see that in access and metro, as soon as we want to bridge that gap to 100G, we need to start going towards coherent technology. Um, this slide I stole from Meta was uh, displayed at OFC 2022, and it clearly outlines that also uh, Meta believes that in data center technologies, coherent is also coming closer and closer to the data center. So already today, 400G ZR is very popular and very successful in data center interconnect, so the 10 to 80 kilometer range. But as the switch capacity increases, roughly two to three years between each um, upgrade step of the routers, let's say, right? Coherent is coming closer and closer. So we believe in the next generation, Coherent will already enter the campus, campus networks, three to 10 kilometer. And in one or two generations, it will go inside the data center fabric, so inside of the data center. So right now, there's only direct detect there. But we will slowly start seeing that as 1.6 terabit is needed, it will need to go to coherent as well. And that's the title of the slide. Basically, everything is trending towards coherent. 
not all at the same time, but even in, in, in access and metro, as well as in data center interconnect, that's where we think it's going. So then if we, we zoom in a little bit on coherent, um, coherent has been around for some time, even coherent, let's say quote unquote pluggables have been around for some time <coughs> since uh, 2010, let's say, where you had these quite big module size of uh, coherent um, devices. And slowly but surely over time, these devices have gotten smaller and smaller, not only in size, but also in power consumption. And, and I think this slide is, is cool in a sense because it's super dramatic to see going from this size to this size, 93% reduction in size in only 10 years. That's really uh, very impressive. And this is also a coherent uh, pluggable. So QSPDD used a lot now for phone and GZR type of uh, applications. So if we look inside of one of these guys, this is what it looks like, stylistically. <laughs> um, so there's basically three major components in there. Um, very important, a digital signal processor, right, to, uh, to do the chromatic dispersion, um, composition, to do the forward error correction, all of these uh, things. There's some analog electronics to drive the optics, both on the transmit side in terms of a driver and on the receive side in terms of an amplifier. And then there's the optical engine. And the optical engine contains of a few different elements, but for today I'd like to focus on the one very important element and that's the laser. Because the laser drives a lot of the performance of the optical engine. So, the laser, um, very important element. And when we design lasers and we talk with our customers about what kind of laser they want, we usually talk about five key parameters. Um, tunability, uh, line width, dimension, so the physical size of the box of the laser. You can think if it, if it has to go in this small cues of PDD, or nowadays even talking about QSP28, it has to be very, very small, right? Um, environmental conditions, uh, I'll talk more about that when I get to that slide, and of course, how much power is coming out of that laser. Also very important because more power is more reach, usually. So I'll take you through these five uh, in turn. So why would you even need a tunable laser? Well, it kind of depends, right, whether you need that or not. Um, one of the things that drives the need for tunability is um, when you have multiple colors of light in the, in the fiber, right? So if you have fiber capacity installed and you want to optimize the amount of data that you can put through a single fiber, you usually move to DWDM, so multiple colors of light in the same fiber, because then you can transmit, instead of like one times 10 gig that you have here, you can transmit 100 times 10 gig. So that's one terabit per second in the same fiber without upgrading your infrastructure. So DWM in that sense is a, is a valuable tool. If you move to DWDM, then tunability is really nice because it means that instead of having 100 part codes with different wavelengths, fixed wavelengths, you can have one part code and you can cater to all of them. Of course, it then adds a little bit complexity as well because you need to train your personnel to tune them to the right wavelength or make sure that your switch is capable of that. But there's also solutions for that in terms of self-tuning um, so the module can find its own way through the network uh, without any additional setup required. So there's an MSA group on this as well, which we've joined, and all of the major transceiver vendors are in there. Um, so it's also interoperable between, between vendors. So, to summarize this slide, basically tunability is nice. If you go DWDM, then tunability really decreases your total cost of ownership. So, uh, you often see on marketing slides the term ultra pure laser. What does that mean? Um, and um, when they say ultra pure laser, usually what it means is uh, low line width, right? So, but why would you be interested in line width of the laser? Well, line width of the laser is important once you start going up in speed. So as soon as you go 100G, 400G, 800G, whatever, the line width of the laser becomes important. Why? Because you can see that in this picture. Top picture, left to right, from one kilohertz line width to 10 megahertz line width, so low line width to high line width. And this is low speed to high speed, or two different types of speed. 
and you can see, for instance, here that uh, at 100 kilohertz, both 16 gigabaud and 32 gigabaud are okay in terms of the error vector measure, right? So that's representation of errors on the signal. But once you move, start moving to a one megahertz line width, it starts mashing together, right? So you, you're going to get in trouble with, uh, with errors on your, uh, on your line. So basically, you need an ultra pure laser if you want to transmit very high uh, bandwidth signals. That's the key takeaway without going into too much technical detail. Um, so, as I showed, this one I showed already, right? So, um, the plug balls get smaller, which means that the lasers also need to get smaller. And this picture I stole from, uh, from Laser Focus World. Um, over time, as the pluggables got smaller, basically in, in sync step with the pluggables getting smaller, the lasers also get smaller. From ITLA, micro ITLA, nano ITLA, and we're currently working uh, with our customers to go even one step lower than that. And uh, for that, you need photonic integration, you need miniaturization of the electronics uh, to go the next step and make even, even smaller lasers. But physical dimension, is definitely a, a very important aspect of, uh, of the design of a tunable laser. So then, as I said, these lasers now need to go, and coherent technology now needs to go to the edge of the network. And the edge of the network is not as nice as a data center. right? So in a data center, you have this nice, what's called, controlled environment. right? So it's always between 40 and 60 degrees on the pluggable, let's say, right? But once you put them out outside, it's going to be completely different, right? In summer, in some hot places, it's going to be 85 degrees. In winter, in Canada, it's going to be minus 40 degrees. So these lasers need to be much more robust against all of these kind of uh, environments. Um, so we design all our products to be industrial temp compatible. And again, that's the full range from minus 40 degrees to plus 85 degrees. And you need to think about that in your design. Last topic, uh, laser transmit power. So laser transmit power depends on your application. What do you need? Do you need a short distance? For, for mobile frontal, it can be quite short. And it's maybe less important. But if you want to go a bit further for cable access networks, usually 80 kilometers needs to be more. Um, but it's not just the application, it's also very dependent on how do you put your module together, your architecture. So in the old days, let's say, when we were still building transponders, quite a big box. You had quite some room to put everything in that you wanted. So you would put a DSP, you would put a laser, you would put your photonics in, you would add an amplifier, micro amplifier or micro EDFA to pump the signal again, and you would have to add a tunable filter to get rid of the noise that the amplifier introduced. So the, the transmit power is very high, very nice. Low noise, also good. Size quite big. Um, and cost also quite high because you have to put all these discrete components together in a very complicated uh, way. So as uh, miniaturization and integration um, evolved, we managed to squeeze all of these components into a smaller box. Um, still basically the same component, just a bit smaller in a CFP2. As you make it smaller, usually performance goes down a little bit, so output power not quite as high, but the rest still pretty much okay. Size is already smaller and cost also go down due to the miniaturization and, and the advancement in technology basically. So nowadays we are here and basically to make a QZ of PDD now you have two options. Um, roughly speaking, uh, you either have a DSP, a laser, and then usually a silicon photonics uh, uh, optical front end, right? So that's this option. Or uh, the option below, where, where part of our focus is, um, is to have a DSP and then a laser integrated with the optical front end in, in a material platform um, that supports both light generation and light modulation and photodiodes, etc. So both options have, have their own appeal. I'm not saying one is per se better than the other. 
Um, but you can see that in terms of output power specifically, uh, there's a, a large difference between fully integrating the optics together or having still discrete components uh, in there. But if you're thinking about designing a laser for here, you need to think about it in a different way than if you're designing a laser for, for this uh, use case. Okay, so that brings me to, to my conclusion slide, just to wrap up um, the five elements that I just talked about. So, um, network traffic is increasing exponentially, edge traffic specifically so, which means we have to find solutions in order to address that. Um, coherent, we believe, is the solution that will, that will arrive in all of these markets at, at, a, at some point in time some sooner, some later, but it's trending in that direction. And for coherent to go to the edge, you need a laser that is suitable for that, right? And then the question is, what is suitable? And that's what I tried to explain today, that there are these five knobs that you can turn. Um, tunability, coherent is always, in the applications that we look at, is a DWDM uh, type of component. So then you really want it to be tunable because that makes your total cost of ownership and the ease of use um, much lower. The ease of use higher, total cost of ownership lower. And you need to be sure that you select the right laser topology to support this tunability. Line width, right? So lower line width supports higher speed. That's basically the takeaway. So you need to be able to select the right material platform to generate this low line width uh, light. Dimensions we talked about, right? The plug is getting smaller, so the laser needs to be smaller. So you need some sort of photonic integration. I, I put photonic between brackets because also the electronics need to be very tightly integrated with that, right? So it's, you need to optimize all of the components together to really be able to shrink down in size. The environmental conditions at the edge are quite different than in a nicely controlled data center. It's outdoors, there's temperature changes, day, night, summer, winter. Humidity changes as well, it's also an important aspect. So you need to select a laser that is well packaged, qualified, and, and controlled um, across its lifetime, right? So if stabilized by good control algorithms to make sure that it doesn't um, uh, feel the effects of the environment. Final, uh, final parameter is the output power. So again, here it depends a lot on what application are you using this laser for, long distance, short distance, and how do you put your module together? With integrated photonics, fully integrated photonics, or with silicon photonics, or do you have more room, like a CFP2, then you can put an amplifier in. It all depends. Uh, these things all determine your choice of the laser uh, in the end. And that was it for me. Um, I think this says, says a lot about how we like to work with our customers. So if you, if you have any questions, if you have any applications for lasers that you want to talk about, please come, f come visit us or please feel free to ask questions now as well. Any questions? If not, then thank you very much and uh, enjoy the show. <laughs>